I was checking out Pinterest one day and I saw a few different crafts that I thought were so cool and perfect for nature inspired DIYs. I wanted to see if I could try to recreate them using supplies that I already have on hand. Let's see if I succeed. Hey, it's Donna here and I'm happy to have you joining me today. For this project, I'm using this beautiful spring green color on this 12 by 16 wood canvas board. I got this from a store called Dollarama here in Canada, but you can pick these up online as well as in craft stores. So I'm just going to give it a coat on the interior. This is my inspiration. I fell in love with these and I've been wanting to do this for a while. So I'm just going to coat the background within the frame. This is the back side of the canvas board. I like to use it this way because then I have a nice finish frame around the edge. Allowing that to dry a bit and now I'm going around the edge and coating that with some warm white. Now, you don't have to paint this, you could stain it, which I actually wish I did do. I didn't end up doing that. I might change it later on down the road, but I decided just to use this color for now and then of course, feel free to use any paint colors that you like for your home decor. I just am really enjoying this spring green color with a warm white. So don't forget to paint the outside and you can paint the backside as well. You could even put a hook on the backside to hang it on, on the wall if you'd like. So I had foraged this branch and I'm going to cut it down to size. I just trimmed off all the little pieces that jet out from this. I originally had wanted to glue like the entire piece down and just trim it down to fit within the frame. But I actually ended up cutting away all the branch pieces because it wasn't laying flat on the canvas board. So it depends on the type of branch that you're using and then you can just adjust accordingly. So here is the main trunk of my tree and now you can see how I've got all those other pieces cut off and I'm going to just lay them out and some of the branches I cut the tip on an angle that way here I could get it up against my tree trunk a little bit more easily and more naturally. Now as you're building your tree base you're just kind of getting a basic shape and idea of your layout and to make sure that you have a look that you like. Now it does end up changing a bit for me as I start to <laughs> move things away and start to glue things into place. So I'm using hot glue for this. You will be using actually quite a bit of glue. So have a nice bundle of hot glue sticks on hand. So I'm just going to continue here to add all my branches and I'm just making sure that they are trimmed to the right size. I did want them to fit within my frame. And again, just make sure that you glue them well so they don't pop off later on. So I'm really liking the shape now. I'm gonna to start to overlap some of my smaller branches, just like you would actually see out in nature. I think that just adds to the look. So just like in the original pieces that you saw, I'm gonna be using this preserved reindeer moss and I've got three different shades of color. Now I have had all this reindeer moss on hand for quite a while. So I thought that um, I would try my best using this. You do want to use moss that's got nice fluffy clumps. So you'll see me using those pieces for the most part, but I do end up running into a little bit of an issue, which I will share in a little bit. But right now I'm just going to add my nice fluffy clumps just randomly throughout and mixing the colors. And as you can see, I did use hot glue to adhere these moss clumps onto our tree base. As we go on, I will start to layer some of this and you'll also want to place some of the clumps underneath some of the branches as well, just like I showed you right there. It just creates a more natural look. This is going to be kind of like um, the leafy canopy of the tree. So you can see how it's taking shape here. 
And I'm just going to continue to mix my colors, mix in the layers. And as I move on, what I end up having to do was take some of my branches and snip them off because they were just jutting out a little bit too much. And then I would just snip them down and glue them and tuck them into the moss. I felt like that it just added a bit more dimension and a bit more of a realistic look. And as you go along, you might need to add a little bit more glue here and there. Just kind of figure it out as you go along what your piece will need. So here I ended up clumping some of the tiny little pieces together and adding hot glue. I, I did struggle with that a little bit, but I made it work. So I'm just going to continue to work on the tree until I am happy with how it looks. I do continue to layer the moss pieces as well. Here you'll see me adding some moss to the bottom. I felt like it was missing a little bit and it just needed a little bit on the bottom. Just to add a little grassy look. I think this is turning out so pretty. I could just imagine somebody sitting under the tree, daydreaming or reading a book, listening to the sounds of the birds chirping in the tree. I think it's such a fun little piece. So once you are happy with how it looks, you can go back in and add a little bit of hot glue here and there just to make sure nothing is loose. You can flip the board upside down and shake it to remove any loose bits or also to check to see where there are any loose pieces that need extra glue. Use a hairdryer to remove the hot glue strings and then it's ready to be put on display. For this next nature inspired piece, I'm using this lantern that I had fixed up over Christmas time. This is my inspiration here on Pinterest. And I had to remove all the Christmas bit bits. I started by removing the battery operated lights. And then I also had to remove the snow and the tree. If you have a piece like this, you can just remove all the pieces from the lantern and here I'm just trying to lift it up using a metal spatula and it did pull up some of the paint but I was okay with that because I am going to be covering the base. So I will have the original video for this piece linked down in the description box if you want to see how I made this over because it was a pretty icky piece. All right so I'm using these moss sheets, figurines and some florals. And I am also using these branches here that I picked up from Michael's a while back and I thought they looked like little trees. I'm also going to be using the fairy lights for this as well. So these moss sheets are sticky back and they were left over from a previous project. I needed to cut them down and just kind of puzzle the pieces together until the bottom of my lantern was covered. So you'll see me cutting the pieces up and just kind of putting them into place until I've got the base fully covered. I did add just a tiny bit of hot glue to the bottom to help hold everything into place. Feel free to use some other um, item on the base of your lantern as well. I just liked the moss. I felt like it would give a bit more of a forest look and you'll see why here in a minute. So once I have got this piece all covered, I can then start to add all my other embellishments. I wanted to create a grove of trees and I thought this looked like trees with a bunch of little leaves on it. And I'm also gonna trim down some of my little florals and set those aside. So then with the trees, I ended up taking the base off of some bottle brush trees that I had used over Christmas time, I saved them and I thought they would be a perfect base for these little trees. So these, the bottoms did pop off and then I just had to cut away a plastic bit and that exposed a hole where the original wire of the bottle brush tree had gone in. I needed to expose that because I need to poke the wire that I'm exposing here off the end of my tree you can just see I'm using wire cutters to expose the wire there and I needed to poke that through the hole and now I'm going to fill in that base with some hot glue that will help to stabilize that wire and then I'll just put the base back into place 
And now I'm going to add just a little bit more hot glue around the base of the tree as well. And that will really help to stabilize it. The reason why I did it this way was because I wanted the tree to sit nicely within my lantern. You could uh, just leave it as is. You could also twist the wire to create a base or you could use something else. I didn't like how stark white the bases were. So I'm just using some green craft paint to just cover them up. You can use some moss as well if you do choose to add these bases. Once I have the bases all painted, I'm going to be setting them aside and allowing them to dry well. And then I am going to cut down some more branches for this. You can see these are thinner and they've got lots of detail. I'm just cutting them down to size. And then I am going to start to assemble everything inside the lantern. So I like to always figure out my placement first before I hot glue everything into place. So I started off with these little trees got those all glued into place and then I am going to go ahead and continue to add my little branches that I had cut down again I wanted to create the look of a grove of trees as if you were out in the forest taking a walk in nature I really thought this was a pretty look and these natural branches add a nice natural touch So one thing that's nice about this lantern is it doesn't have the glass panels in. So I'm able to go in around the back and the sides and create more dimension to my piece uh, by applying some or put, placing some of the things through the holes and using the hot glue gun to adhere them. All right, so now I'm gonna add my figurines. I got this cute little stump and this little bunny from Dollar Tree. I'm just using some hot glue again to put this into place. I felt like he needed to just be up on a little stoop. I think he's so cute. So I'm going to figure out my placement for that little guy and put it into place. I like to do stuff like this in layers. That way here I can still get my hand in there. My hands are a little bit on the bigger side. So um, I'm now going to add some moss before I add anything else. I just felt like the base of the trees just a look, looked a little bit awkward. So I'm just using my bamboo stick to press the moss into the hot glue and here you'll see me going through the side panel again to access the backside and the sides of the lantern again to create that depth. I'm going to add this cute little hedgehog now and I cannot remember where I got this little guy. I am so sorry, but I know you can find figurines like this at lots of different stores. I've seen them all over the place. So check out all your local craft stores, garden centers, dollar stores as well. Now I'm going to start to add some florals. Now these are little snippets that I had, I've used them over and over and over again. I believe I originally got these from Oh, Dollar Tree and then some of these florals. Yeah, all of them from Dollar Tree. Uh, it's the, the leafed trees that I got from Michaels. So I'm just going to snip them down and put them into place where I think they would look nice. I kind of wish I had some little pink flowers on hand. I didn't. I thought that they would really add a really nice pop of color, but I did find these little pink leaves instead. So I'm just going to use those and just place scatter them here and there until I get a look that I'm really happy with. So yeah, I'm going to use these fairy lights again. They are uh, wine bottle lights and it's a nice small compact battery pack and it's on Velcro. So I was able to tuck that inside where you can't see it. I always like to place my lights in around everywhere and I like to put them into place while they're on because that way here I can see the placement really well. And I am just loving how this turned out. I think it's so cute and so whimsical. Perfect for a nature DIY. For our next project, you're going to need some tissue paper. I've got this kind of like a rice paper that's got some natural elements 
throughout it's handmade these ones are from dollar tree nice botanical pattern use whatever you have you also need some matte decoupage water some pressed leaves or flowers a balloon and some paint brushes and a mat to protect your surface this is going to get messy as you can see this is my inspiration i have been wanting to do this for so long i have a container and i'm going to mix two parts decoupage glue with one part water now i'm doing this because it creates a bit more of a matte finish but it will also help to absorb into the paper better without it creating too thick of a gluey substance all over the piece i li like to do it that way so i decided on using this handmade paper i got this from i think either stationary pal or maybe Tamu, I can't remember exactly where I got it, but um, I've seen handmade papers like this in lots of different online stores as well as stationery stores. I just ripped the pieces down to size. I also blew up my balloon and I have a nice little bowl here to set my balloon in so I can work on it. You're gonna need a soft paintbrush and start to apply the glue. Now you can see it's the perfect consistency because it's not dripping all over. You apply the glue to the balloon and then press a piece of the tissue into the glue and then apply some glue over top and it worked really really well now as i was working on this piece i did overlap some of my pieces but i also realized that i should have torn those hard edge cut edges like i just removed it right there um I like to tear the edges because it gives a bit more of an organic look so I should have done that right from the start but I didn't so if you do this then I highly recommend that you do it that way so I'm gonna continue to work on this until I have the entire balloon covered once you have your first layer on you can start to add your flowers or leaves I had pressed these fern leaves last summer and I was so excited to be able to use them. So I just tried to figure out the best way to apply them. So I've realized that these smaller pieces worked better. So you add some glue over top and again, the water is going to help to absorb into the leaf. Going to press and hold it there and then add a piece of tissue over top. and. You can see how I'm just working it around the, uh, the fern and then I'm going to continue to add another fern and then um, some more glue and there's going to be some little tips and tricks that I share with you as I go along that made it a little bit easier for me. Like right here, I discovered that there was a bit of a curvature to my fern leaf and it worked around the balloon really well. So once flowers start growing in around my area, it has been requested that I share how I press my flowers. So definitely stay tuned for that video coming up over the summer season. So I'm going to continue to add my uh, ferns and my tissue paper until I get a look that I am really happy with. Here I discovered that you can just gently press out some air bubbles that you may get. You have to be really, really careful because the tissue paper is really delicate. If you get a little bit of um, a tear, you can just add another piece of tissue paper and more glue. If it's thin in anywhere, any areas, then feel free to add some more tissue paper in those areas as well. So I also added just some little tiny pieces of fern here and there. As you can see, my tissue paper had um, some dried leaves throughout it as well. I thought it just helped with the look of this piece. I allowed it to dry just a little while just to help it to set up a bit. I'm using this glass bowl and I'm just putting it upside down. And I have a vent in my ceiling down in my basement in my craft room, so it allowed it to dry a little bit faster. So it's not completely dry, but it is dry enough that I realize I'm like, okay, I need to put another layer of tissue paper on here. It's just a little bit too thin. So the beauty of this as well is that you can see exactly where you need to place some more tissue. So you can see that the tissue, the new tissue is white, but the rest of it is a semi transparent. So makes it so much easier to see where you need to put some more tissue paper. Mm -hmm. 
So once you got your entire piece done, you're going to put it aside and allow it to dry. You're going to need to flip it over once because um, you need the bottom to be dry as well. And it, I found that it evened it out for drying time. So the glass bowl left a little bit of an edge or a mark on here. So I realized that I should have probably used a container that only touched the balloon portion of this piece. But in the end, you don't actually really see that mark anyways. So I'm just gently pushing on the balloon and that's going to release the tissue paper from the balloon. And I'm just testing to make sure I'm happy with the thickness before I completely remove the balloon. And I am definitely happy with this thickness and this, how sturdy it is. I was actually quite impressed. So I snip off the top of the balloon and it's gonna slowly deflate. You're gonna carefully remove the balloon. I, I did have a spot here where it started to tear, so I had to be very careful with that. Remove it and it's gonna be wobbly so you can put it on your surface and gently press it down. I'm going to show you two ways to light this up. Just got this little battery tea light that I placed in there. I think it looks really pretty. It has a gentle flickering glow. Another option is to use some fairy lights that are a battery operated as well. Just going to place the battery pack into the bottom and then you want to stretch out your wire and just make sure that the lights are dispersed. I think it's such a pretty, pretty glow. If you're looking for some more unique inspiration, then check out this video here to the right. Let me know what you think of the projects I shared with you today, and let me know if there's any other Pinterest inspired DIYs that you'd like me to do. Thank you for being here today. See you in the next one. Bye.